Hi, and welcome to GitHub Checkout. Today, we're going to talk about exciting feature um, of GitHub, which is called Dependabot. And my guest today is Maya Kaczorkowski. Maya, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Maya Kaczorkowski. I'm a product manager at GitHub working on software supply chain security. Sorry, I definitely screwed up your name every time we've uh, had a conversation. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, so Dependabot is not super new, but I think some of our viewers might still not know what it is all about. So would you like to describe it? For sure. So Dependabot is basically your friendly update bot for your, for your environment that lets you know when you have a security vulnerability in one of your dependencies and helps you update that dependency. And Dependabot does a couple of different things. It um, alerts you when you have a vulnerability in a dependency. It also sends you a pull request for vulnerabilities and dependencies. And you can also enable Dependabot to send you pull requests for general updates. So when there's a new version of a dependency out that you want to update to. OK, this all sounds really useful. So actually, you have been working primarily on software supply chain security features since you came over to GitHub. And I think this work is really, really important because we know from software composition reports that over 90% of all applications in the world use uh, open source software. And this is a good thing because like no one needs to re-implement simple math in their application over and over again. But it also means that we're all having open source dependencies. So how does it impact? project security. Yeah, that's that's completely right. I mean, from the latest uh, state of the Octoverse report, we know that anywhere from 65 to 94 percent of active repos on GitHub rely on open source code. And the variability there is coming from uh, different ecosystems. And exactly what you're saying, everyone has a huge dependency on open source. You know, the median active repo might only have a handful of direct dependencies, but it has many hidden indirect dependencies as well with JavaScript being the clear winner with a median 683 transitive dependencies. Now, wow. we want people to keep using open source, right? This is not telling you to use less open source, um, but rather be aware of what you're using. Because if one of your dependencies has a vulnerability, then chances are that you have the vulnerability as well. Um, so as a software developer, what you really need to know is know what's in your environment. So you know, know what dependencies you use. And then manage your dependencies, so knowing about vulnerabilities in those dependencies, knowing about the latest versions of those, um, and being able to patch them. So when there is a new vulnerability, you can quickly discover it and react to it by patching your environment. Yeah, and so in terms of patching, we know from and various reports differ by numbers, but we know that it takes quite a long time for software projects to remediate vulnerabilities once the known vulnerability is announced. How can Dependabot help me take care of that problem? Yeah, uh, Dependabot sends you an alert as soon as we ingest data about vulnerabilities. So, uh, and then sends you a PR. So it's very fast, you know, automation for the win. And uh, exactly what you're just saying, from the latest state of the Octopus report, we know that people who use automation to find and address vulnerabilities, such as Dependabot security updates, uh, remediate those vulnerabilities faster. Uh, when, a, when a repository automatically generated a pull request to update to the fixed version, they patched their software in 33 days, which is 13 days faster than those who did not. That's 1.4 times faster remediation of security issues with, with automation. That's actually amazing that I just enable a tool and then I get 1.4 times faster in terms of securing my code. That That's a huge win. Um, in some cases, Dependabot, Dependabot sends me an alert. And in some cases, it creates an automated PR. And I'm kind of a little bit lost in what case um, triggers what? Yeah, we will always try to uh, generate a PR and send it to you. But there's a few cases where that's not possible. Uh, and there's hopefully help, helpful error messages to tell you what's going on. Um, some of the common cases include, for example, invalid graphs. So what I mean by that is you might have dependency A, depending on dependency uh, versions, you know, one or two. And dependency B needs versions two or more. Uh, and then if you have to upgrade to version three, for example, because of uh, a vulnerability, then A will no longer work. So Dependabot will not send you a PR in that case because we don't want to cause uh, a breaking change in your environment. Um, another situation, for example, where Dependabot might not send you a PR for an alert is if you already have an open pull request that will fix the version. Uh, we're not going to send you another pull request to then have to close it if you already have one open that would address the issue. 
Oh, that's really cool. So it actually recognizes that I already have a PR in my environment. That rem that that's cool. I didn't know that. Um, so we are talking about quite an exciting thing. Um, would you like to show us a demo how it all works? Yeah, I would love to. So let me just share my screen. So uh, we are looking at uh, my repository here. I have a manifest file in my repository, and I have a handful of dependencies that are that are explained in that manifest file. So far, so good, not a whole lot going on. So let me actually go enable these security features first. So I'll go over to my settings tab and my security analysis options. And I'll enable, what I really want to enable is dependbot alerts and dependbot security updates. And those require the dependency graph to know what your dependencies are. Uh, if I'm lazy and I just hit enable, you can actually get all of them at once. So let's enable all three of those features. And now we have dependbot uh, dependency graph, dependent alerts, and dependent security updates enabled. So I'll go over to my security tab. In my security tab, you'll see there's already dependent alerts sent to me. So it was very, very fast and, and automatically worked in that environment. And I have um, four alerts, uh, and they tell me, you know, what severity the alerts are. It tells me um, what manifest file it's affecting and what the issue is. So I click through to that, and uh, I can get some details on what that vulnerability is. Uh, so I have an issue in Jackson data bind. I should upgrade to version 2.9.10.4 or later. And actually what I saw was that there was, you know, critical severity, but there's lots of different security issues in this, in this given, um, alert. So we've combined a lot of information about this one dependency into all the, the vulnerabilities that you're affected by for that one dependency today. This looks very human readable and it looks like something that I can consume, even if I'm not super deep into security, I can understand what the severity of this is, what's the impact and how I best can remediate this issue. Correct, yeah, all of these will have remediation information kind of right at the top that tells you what you need to do to fix that in your environment. And so, um, you know, we alert, opened the alert 22 seconds ago and Dependabot's trying to generate for us a security update. So that's a pull request actually to ad address the issue that we have in our environment. Uh, let me just go back and see if we have a security a pull request already generated. And in fact, the one that I was just looking at, we do. And I'll click on that pull request. And that pull request uh, addresses a security vulnerability. So you have that information right there if you have the permissions to see that. And it tells you what it's working on. It's upgrading Jackson DataBind from 2.8.11.0 to 2.9.10.5. Um, I can go over and see what's changed. See, yep, it's actually making that change in my environment. And if I feel comfortable about that, and if I have, uh, you know, my, my checks have passed, that's a very important part of reviewing pull requests. If my checks have passed, I can go ahead and merge that PR. So you bring me to an important question, which is like, how do I make sure that I'm not introducing the breaking changes to my environment? And it sounds like run your tests. Is, is the run your to. tests. <laughs> it's a very accurate <laughs> statement. Like I said, we, we, a dependent bot will not send you, um, something that would result in an invalid graph. Uh, we will send you a major version upgrade for dependent bot security updates because if that's what you need to fix a vulnerability, that's what you need. Uh, but you should always review, you know, the, um, change log or you know, release notes of your dependencies before making changes between dependencies and test them in your environment to make sure that you're going to be good. Understood. Great. Um, and so that fixed the vulnerability that I had that actually updated kind of while we were chatting. And if I go over to security, I should now see that I still have a couple of alerts open. Yep. And in fact, my other dependency, sorry, my other vulnerabilities and dependencies now all have pull request generated as well. So Dependabot is working hard for me today and I have lots of work to go merge these in as well. That sounds great. And so there is a separate, separate pull request for every vulnerability that needs to get updated. There is a pull request um, right now per dependency uh, in your repo that needs an update. So it's not per vulnerability. If there are multiple vulnerabilities in a dependency, it'll send you only one for the dependency. Sounds good. Is there any other um, demo stuff that you wanted to show us? Um, well, so I've been talking only about Dependabot uh, security alerts and depend about uh, security updates, but I think maybe we'll save for another another conversation depend about uh, version updates, which also let you keep your keep your dependencies up to date. 
Nice. Yeah, that sounds like uh, we could have a whole different conversation about it. Um, so uh, I guess I have one last question, which is interesting. And that's how do how does depend about learn about new vulnerabilities? Where do we get that information? Yeah, um, Dependabot uh, gets information about vulnerabilities from GitHub's advisory database. So that's information that maintainers have submitted to GitHub about uh, security issues in their own repositories, as well as information that we import to GitHub from um, other, other registries, other vulnerability information, so that we can tell you what's going on in, in your environment. Um, Dependabot will then send you an alert and a PR and all that kind of information in basically two cases, if you think about it that way. The first case is where you have an existing dependency that has a new vulnerability. Um, so you're newly affected by something that's happened, we'll let you know. The second case is where you have in, uh, a new, new dependency that you're introducing, where you're introducing a dependency that already has a vulnerability in it. Um, now, if you're using something like dependency review, hopefully you can catch that before it happens. Uh, but otherwise, we'll send you a dependabot alert once you introduce that to your environment. Yeah, that dependency review here is very useful because it prevents you from even committing that code, I guess. Yep. Um, so if I wanted to get started with Dependabot today, and I know there's a little bit of a difference for public versus private um, repos, how do I get started? The easiest way to get started is to enable the features like I showed at the beginning of the demo. Um, they are enabled on public repos by default, and you can go enable them on uh, private repos uh, in that settings tab. Sounds good. So we're obviously going to add some documentation links to this. And, um, you know, you can all get started reviewing the blogs and the docs and obviously taking advantage of this amazing feature. So thank you, Maya, for uh, working on these features and helping us make the web more secure. Um, and also thank you for being here with me today. This has been GitHub Checkout. And please hit subscribe for more interesting videos about GitHub features. Thank you and bye.